Good morning, ladies and gents. Today, I'm at least starting with the fact that I think my skills are not quite right. And so I say that with um, pretty good confidence that things can be shifted and reorganized to work better, if not the fact that uh, some stuff in here needs to be just straight up added or removed. So, for example, um, right now we've got weaponry. Weaponry seems fine. Everything I've got here um, seems to be working so far in terms of weaponry. This gives me kind of a large, broad range of options that I really like. Uh, so that's fine. And that's actually one that I went so far as to uh, actually somewhat finish up within the, uh, the character creator. Obviously, I didn't go so far as to, like put all the numbers in and tie everything up yet, but that's coming. Um, the thing that I'm really uh, kind of considering right now is the fact that if we look at the, the list of academic skills, this is pretty long. And then if we look at the list of physical skills, it's incredibly short. And what I'm looking to do is, um, right now, first off, academic and physical skills, eh, I don't like those names that kind of has a weird uh, set of, um, I don't know, it has a weird subset of skills that'll be attached to it. Because when you think of a skill, right, skills are things that are learned for the most part. You don't really learn to hide so much as it's experience hiding that tells you where is good and where isn't. Somebody could tell you, yeah, hiding in the dark is great, and like you can get hints and tips, but learning how to hide is is a different thing from learning how to say, um, identify plants or read a map or, uh, you know, how to uh, identify certain things in the world. So I think I'm going to break these apart. Also, uh, I have these four character identifiers next to all this. Those are pretty much unnecessary at this point. I initially was thinking of describing every uh, skill with simply an integer. But as it turns out, using a, uh, a set of flags or just an enum, actually I think I'm using an enum, the enum is a much easier way to handle that, so I'm not quite so worried about that. Uh, and one idea here would be that we have weaponry, weaponry is pretty much going to stay as is, right? That's the thing that's not going anywhere. Um, but we're going to swap academia and maybe say, well, this is more general skills versus this is class skills. Um, or I guess I'd call this specific. Um, and the reasoning for this is that uh, there are some skills that you will or won't be able to learn based on your class, your race, possibly your gender. Um, there will be certain things that just don't work out. Uh, for example, having a, uh, I guess gender might not be such a, a good example because gender so far I don't have anything. Eh. Um, so, for example, though, like, spell weaving is not something everybody can learn. In fact, it's an incredibly limited set of skills. So, part of me says, okay, well, that should go in with the specific. And then, okay, uh, religion, fine, anybody can, can do religion. Um, although you'll notice that some of these don't have uses next to them either. Versus, um, like, persuasion, um... I don't know what I was thinking, but this reads like perception, not persuasion. So let's just rewrite this. Uh, it locks the persuasion, persuasion options within the dialog tree. Right? That's what persuasion does. If there are branches in the dialog tree that are persuasion based, they'll let you go down that path if this skill is high enough. Great. Um, Mythology aids in identifying creature types, subtypes, gives a bonus to critical hit chance when a correct subtype is identified. Perfect, right? I like it. Um, musicianship. Okay, now we're on to something that eh, maybe everyone can do, right? Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, history, sure. First aid, whatever. Um, most of these actually look fine after that. Alchemy, I'm also a little iffy on. But uh, we've already moved, you know, one thing down. I'm sure we'll be able to come up with more specific things that are class only that we can shift downwards. 
Uh, also, searching maybe shouldn't be down here in specific. So I need to find a better way to, to just completely organize these things. Because clearly, as is, we have this giant section. And then if you're like a thief, yeah, you'll have, what, these three or four things. If you're a wizard, you will have, or priest, you have the one skill in specific. Like, that doesn't work well. And I need to come up with a better way to handle it. Either doing two tabs and just having everything fall under those two tabs. Um, that's one option. I'm honestly still thinking about this a lot. This is something that's causing me a lot of slowdown in terms of design because we're getting to that point where I need skills to be somewhat solid so that I can dive in and start implementing things that use the skills in place. So for example, uh, using an artifacts skill to use an item in your inventory that's unknown or an alchemy skill to identify a potion, we're coming up on the point where we need these things to be able to work. And so because we need these things to work, we now need to figure out why isn't it working? What, what do we need to do to reorganize this to get it to work? On the upside, weaponry is fine. Hey! Kind of as a plus. Um, so the plan today was to get things tied together such that uh, the number of points you had left, you could then spend on at least weaponry things. Right, And then we need to figure out, okay, now we've got uh, this working, we then need to start serializing information eventually. Also, we need to start thinking about stuff like uh, portrait choosing and any other information that needs to kind of fall into place afterwards. Also, how do we generate these characters such that we have to uh, put them into the party afterwards? All questions I keep asking myself. 65 Fahrenheit's like a heat wave? I have my AC, or my AC, my, uh, my heater set to 65 Fahrenheit. <laughs> All right. Um, so first things first, we need the numbers, unfortunately. So that's kind of something that just needs to happen. And there's really no way around that. So we have our axis skill going to say zero initially. Uh, we know we also need to center the text and I'm going to drag this object. Let's see, we're going to have the size of the, the object and then we're just going to kind of set it as best we can between these two. That looks pretty good. And now each time we generate a new one, we just pop it down to the right place. Give it a name of some kind. And we will have to tie these together at some point with uh, some code, so don't worry, we'll be diving into that shortly. I also can't help but notice that uh, staves, swords, throne, and whips are all way too high. Yeah, thought so. Okay. Staves, you need to go down 30. Swords needs to go down 30. Throne needs to go down 30. And whips to go down 30. Just a little shift to get these things off of one another. We don't tolerate that kind of behavior in our UI. That's gross. To some level, you can have, um, I could have people who could identify things for you, but I don't want an item to be completely unidentifiable because the players just happen to like run into it too early or uh, some issues of like, well, nobody can identify this because we need to use this mechanic. So I'm kind of iffy about um, having 
characters who are in the world be able to identify things. I definitely would like for there to be items that are um, kind of of legend or are told about in like books and literature. But uh, in terms of having characters identify things, like NPCs identify things, I'm not quite so excited about that thought. Because I see that becoming a chore. Oh, I know who knows about this item, and I can't use it until I walk it to him. And the problem is also, how do you tell who knows about what? Suddenly the characters, yeah, they have to go exploring, but they also have to do something like go wandering around the world four or five times to get to that person, and I'd rather not do that. All right, so we've got our numbers in place. We've got the pluses, minuses, all that stuff taken care of. Uh, the real question now becomes, how do we tie this all together? Because once again, uh, we have a certain number of skill points that we need to be able to distribute among all of our skills, or not even all, just some of our skills, right? Um, I don't know if I have some way to generate how many points you get. Um, I don't see a number of skills to pick out, so my guess is that I have to... Um, yeah, my guess is that I have to actually... do this by hand for now and I have to just kind of toss a magical number in for now and I'm gonna have to come up later with uh, the number of skills a person should or shouldn't get based on um, certain details that's fine based on something like a stat or a um, kind of a, a mix of information inside the character for now We'll just magic number it. Uh, let's see here, where is my character creation? So right now we have total points. This actually should become, uh, gosh, where did it rename? Total stat points. And points left should actually become uh, stat points left. Because now we also are going to have uh, total skill points and skill points left. Uh, let's see here. I don't really need to reset skills. Oh, yes, I do actually. So the same way I reset stats, I also need to reset skills. Uh, and part of that comes down to, well, we need to think about when we have all our skills in one place, um, what happens when you change classes and say you can't change class to something because uh, you have put points into a skill that the previous class you were thinking about having um, doesn't work out that way. You know, it says, oh yeah, you can't do that because well, you know, the thug could wield axes and your new character can't wield axes. So that's not gonna work. So we're gonna kind of follow the same format as we did for stats, except that skills is a little more crazy in depth. So we need to think about this maybe a little more before we just dive in and start mindlessly coding. Uh, skill points left obviously equals the total skill points. Um, we need to do two things. We need to have a list of who has access to what skills. We also need to come along and say, well, for each, uh, class we need to also have actually no that's only one thing for each class you have what skills unlocked that's fine uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that needs to happen here we probably just need to zero everything out honestly um,
Hmm. So we could kind of do something similar to what we did with stat block, and we could make a skill block, which would be monstrously large, but also would take care of some of our issues, especially since um, if we look at our skill list, we have a skill max. So clearly that's not a terrible thing. Um, let's start with the obvious stuff that I can think of off the top of my head, right? Uh, we have... Um, So we have our class information, we have the class minimums. This has got to become the class stat minimums. Also public, okay, uh, it's a, it's an array of objects that contains an array of 39 booleans, or not 39, however many skills we have. It's not 39, 32. Wow, that's a lot of, a lot of skills. Um, oh well, here we go, serializable system. That's serializable. Uh, here's our, uh, of, we're gonna call this one the available skill block. really wish it would stop reformatting my stuff like that uh, and this has got two pieces to it right we've got the character class same as the other and then we have this huge list of boolean uh, and this uses the skill used dot max to tell us just how many skills should be available we have to convert that over to an integer, otherwise it won't play nice. Why have I written public int stats that is new int 9 when you already know the size? Why not allocate at compile time? This isn't C++. This is how everything is handled in C Sharp. I have no idea what you're, ta what you're talking about. You'll have to be a little clearer, Executron. Um, so, okay, here's the list of available skills. Once again, all of these are gonna need their little editor helpers, and I'm not terribly happy about that fact. Uh, oh, and we have an error somewhere in here. Oh, duh. Here's an available skill block. And come on, there we go. Now we have our stat minimums and we have skills. I'm gonna have to put the stat minimums back in apparently, that's somewhat terrifying, but how it goes um, I actually technically don't need character class to be a part of this. Um, technically, I really don't actually. But since we need character class for differentiating some of these, I definitely don't mind having them in here for now. So when we say, hey, we've got a thug, and this thug has, you know, all zero in these stats of his. I wonder why it didn't instantiate that. Interesting. Uh, okay, so he's got his nine stats. Um, the class skills then come along. Really? I wonder why it's not doing this by default. That's being a little weird. Um, yeah, I need, I need editor elements to help me out with this. This right here is not a good way to generate content, and I don't want to do it more than once. So let's make ourselves a little editor tool to help. Because otherwise I'm going to go patently crazy trying to work on and work with a lot of this stuff. Uh, so inside editor, or our editor folder, I should say, 
uh, we need. I wonder if I can dump more than one of these in here or if I need only one per. Because these are going to be a bunch of little things for the most part. We'll see if I can do it in one thing. Um, yes, 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 I know. Okay, so. You are not a mono behavior. You, and I have to remember how to do this specifically, because I've only got so many of these that are terribly helpful. So we have a custom property drawer, which requires a Unity Editor, if I remember correctly. And then it is a property drawer. And now we need to overwrite a couple functions. Now these for the most part are fine, or at least the get property height is fine. The thing I'm most interested in here is just the name on that label. That is what's bothering me a ton. I'd honestly like to have this uh, a little more clearly labeled for myself. So, and this isn't the creation helper. This should be the, um, we'll start with skills. The, uh, the skill, And we'll just call it the, um, the skill label helper because I have little better to name it. And we need a custom property for it. Um, let's think here. Right. Um, Because in the other case, we have this custom property drawer, and we also have a custom property to go with it to tell us when we need to use this drawer or not. Drawer, that is a really hard word for me to say for one reason or another. Drawer, drawer, blech. So, let's see here. I almost wish I could just do it for a type. Just say, eh, for this type. Only this type, that's it. Don't care about anything else. Um, oh, and it looks like I can. Type of, and then the type. Uh, available skill block. No? Not gonna, not gonna fly? Oh, I need to give it the full type character creation dot available skill block that's a little overkill but it's also not the end of the world that we have that out there um, I'm gonna toss a breakpoint here start up that and when I select this it should hit our breakpoint there we go so we've got a position we've got a property and we've got the label this is the part I care about the fact that it says element zero ah, ah, ah. that's not how it works we need to actually go so far as to say that instead of uh, instead of the label name that we want, we want to replace it with the skill name. That's what needs to happen here. So I'm actually going to unattach from Unity for a moment. And what we're going to do here. We might do something terrible, and I'm not a huge fan of doing terrible things, but it might just work out this way. Um, so enum has a class associated with it that lets you do some really cool things. Uh, and it's under the system namespace, and we all we have to do is say get name, and we should be able to, here's the name of the constant in the specified that has the specified value. Yes, that is what we want. Um, so label.text should be set to uh, 
Uh, actually, this should be set to the skill used. And the value here, this is gonna be the, the more difficult part. We have to figure out what the index in the array is. And I think we can figure that out using uh, Hmm, I thought I could figure it out using this. Depth, display name, editable. I might just have to do this the hard way. It looks like I will, so let's just do it the hard way. Uh, currently we know label says element and then name, or element and then number. So what we can do is we can just substring and then parse. So int.parse uh, label.text.substring. Uh, it wants a starting index, so e-l-e-m-e-n-t -E -E colon space. So starting at nine and going to the end. And that should do the trick. Uh, now this might be a little volatile on its own. Cool. Just want to make sure that this code works because when it doesn't, it tends to break Unity's editor. Uh, it should be triggering. There we go. So the label text is element zero. And then this is blank. I think I went one too far. This should be not be nine, but eight. Okay, we're close. It just seems to have some issue with the fact that uh, one of the functions isn't really because one of the functions isn't uh, overridden it can't do it itself is that what's going on here um, where's the other <laughs> There, this is what we have to return apparently. Obviously return should only be there once. Oh, I don't even know why I have to hit start. This should be working in the editor. Okay, some of this works, some of this doesn't clearly. Um, it says no GUI implemented. That's the weird thing. Even though clearly this is getting called. Hmm. Oh, I think I know what's going on. I keep forgetting that uh, you have to handhold this thing from end to end. So. In order to handhold it, we have to do the following. Um, just this chunk of code essentially does three things. One, it sets out a, a piece of space for this uh, editor to work within. It then uh, makes a label in front of the control, draws the control essentially, and then proceeds to also uh, end the property inside that block so that you have something that's a little more uh, controlled. 
So my only issue now <laughs> is the fact that as elements in the array, this is what I care about, not out here. So I actually missed by a little bit. Um, it's technically the booleans within the uh, the object that I should be caring about, and unfortunately, that's not really what's happening. So, hmm. If I don't do, let's see here, if I don't put the prefix label here, kind of curious what happens. Okay, so the property field is really the big thing here. Uh, the property field and its ability to if I say don't include children, I bet that'll turn off all these booleans and everything inside of it. Yeah, thought so. It also seems to turn off everything else inside of it. You'll notice it allocates the space, but it doesn't actually do anything for it. Okay, so the first thing we can do to help ourselves out and make life a little bit easier here is the fact that we know our label text should not actually be uh, the skills in place, but it should be the class being used. Uh, now... I just kind of realized I don't think my classes oh they are they're they're in this enum actually great great that's exactly what i was hoping for i was hoping somebody somewhere would have access to something like this um and there's no parsing required all i have to do in this case is uh from the property Crap. Uh, I have to find a way to get one of the values inside of it. And that doesn't seem like it's going to be an easy thing to do. Find property relative. I should be able to find... What was its name? <laughs> I think I called it, like, char class. And that uh, should be an integer. I think. I really think. I'm not entirely certain, but I think. So already we've got at least thug. Yeah, thug shows up. And if I select for this one the guardsman, that's going to be its name. Fantastic. I'm going to drop this to a size 2 array just to keep this uh, easy for us. Um, okay, so we've got one label working. Great. That's fantastic. Um, it's a nice touch, but that was purely unhelpful when it comes to understanding which of these elements is which of these skills. And that's something we really have to have working. Okay, so, when I say property field, I have a feeling it's, it's just doing all the properties inside the field. And I think what I want to do in this case is draw the two pieces separately. So we've got the prefix label, which is kind of unnecessary here. Uh, instead, we're going to go for editor GUI dot, uh, let's think. We need to put the character class in first. So actually having this prefix label might not be such a bad thing. Um, except, hmm.
Uh, let's see. Got to think about this. Um, so here's our character class property. Good morning, Lemony Fresh. Let's see. Uh, okay, so we've got the character class property and we proceed to dump its int value out. So now what we have to do is a couple of things that are kind of scary to me, but I'm sure there's an easy way to figure this one out. Um, we need two parts. First, we need this prefix label. And we need to figure out where to put this prefix label because we want to redraw the entire innards of this thing. So instead of having this property field tell us exactly what needs to be where, what I need to do instead is I need to be able to say, well, um, we need to go through and have a, uh, a set of information that tells things where and when it should exist. And the problem is that's a little more difficult than I initially thought. Um, we begin the property with a certain label and a certain property. That's fine. Um, we then proceed to Interesting. Um, oh, GUI content, that's my issue. I'm, I wasn't coming up with the right class here. I was wondering why it was playing not nicely at all with what I was trying to do. So you'll notice it says class here, and it really shouldn't. Um, and that's because the position is incorrect. So if we mess with this thing's position, that'll do the trick. But the problem is, I wanna make sure that, hmm, that everything in here is taken care of correctly. So in our case, I'm kind of tempted to see, let's see, if I get the GUI content, okay, I was hoping there'd be some way to mess with the, the content here. So that we could get uh, essentially the objects in a certain order and take care of it that way. Unfortunately, it seems like the issue is not uh, going to be terribly easy to play with here. We say begin property, that's fine. Um, Hmm. It's been so long since I've messed with any of this stuff that I need to kind of look over a lot of it again just to get a scope of what's going on, uh, see all my options, and r hopefully remember how to, uh, to handle a lot of this stuff. Because this thing's position is just straight up wrong. Like, it's off. And that's obviously not going to do us terribly well. Um, So there's our label for that prefix text. We also want uh, let's see here position. What I'd like to be able to do is say, well, we want 
position.x and position.y plus a certain amount. I don't know what that certain amount is. Um, that might do the trick. Uh, so there's our position, and then we have a new GY content that is the, should just say class. I guess we can just keep an eye out for that for now. Okay, so there's thug and it drops down and says class, great. Uh, first off, that's way too far down, like way too far down. Stream before Christmas? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, I've, I've got work today. I still have to go into the office starting in, you know, 15 minutes. So I will have to hop off in the somewhat near future, but uh, honestly, I'm not too worried about it. Mostly because I'm we're making pretty good progress today. Even though we're just doing editor stuff, it's still good to take care of some of this. And then we also need the enum. Let's see, it's not a mask field, it's a mask pop-up. No, just an enum pop-up. There we go. Um, let's see, plus eight, plus 18. Let's see how this works. Uh, and it wants the enum that is going to be the, the selected enumeration here. Uh, what we need to do... Oh, it wants the selected enum, actually. Um, that is going to be our character class property int value. And since this pumps a value back out, we need to also say character class property dot int value is equal to that. I know that's a long line of code. We can hopefully clean this up. Um, System.enum. I assume there's an easy way to grab an enum value out of this. So let's just see what we got in terms of enum stuff. Uh, enumerator, no, not quite. Uh, enum names, enum display names, the enum value index. All of these are great, but do I just have to implicit or explicitly cast it? No. Why can't I uh, just have this convert over? That's really weird. Um, I guess I have to just convert it to type, so character class. Okay, so this is not the prettiest thing in the world by any stretch of the mind, but uh, we'll see if it works first, and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. Ah, okay, I'm also seeing another issue. So uh, let's add 32 to this and rip 32 off of this. Okay, maybe we need to do a little more than 32. Um, Okay, that's better-ish. Uh, not perfect, but it's kind of doing the trick. I can't help but notice if property is expanded, otherwise base dot get property height. Uh, I, I worry about this a little, but we'll see if this works. 
because we obviously need something like this to exist in here. I honestly would rather not recreate their entire thing. That's the only part of this that I'm kind of unhappy about, is the fact that uh, it looks like, and I'm not certain, but it looks like I'm going to have to recreate a lot of the elements and a lot of the bits and pieces inside their system, and I'm not too happy about that. Also, this looks monstrous. So I'm kind of curious what's going on with it why it's off the edge, and then some. Is there some like editor GUI utility, or editor utility to help me take care of this? Cause that, this doesn't seem like something that should work this way. Oh, wait a minute. GUI layout, okay. This might be what we're hunting for. Um, this really might be what we're hunting for. Uh, so this, let's try an enum pop-up in here and see how that plays. Um, we have our character class, uh, int value. We have the possible layout options, which in this case, we just need a name for it. So new GUI content, whose name is class. And that should be really all I need. In fact, it looks like I can even do this without the GUI content stuff. I can just use a string label and get away with it. Does that look better? That should look better. I hope that looks better. Uh, if it does, I don't see it. Oh, I see it way down here for some reason. That's a little weird. This is what I get for trying to play with editor stuff today. We, we spend so much time kind of futzing with, wait, how does this work in the editor? How is this supposed to be like laid out and tied into the rest of the whole thing? Uh, it's almost kind of painful. Um, so if I say begin a vertical group, and I don't think I need to give it any options, and then I say editor GUI layout dot end vertical, that should give me just one long vertical strip along this thing that takes care of the whole thing. So it seems I'm causing it some kind of pain. Mostly because it doesn't seem to think that I can use the begin vertical followed by the enum pop-up and all this other stuff all at the same time without like completely breaking everything. Uh, very unfortunate, to say the least. You would think that there would be a better way to do this whole thing. Oh, position always comes first. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. The only thing that doesn't make any sense is why the... Oh, because I'm messing with height, that's why. Duh. 
I'm miss I'm messing with completely the wrong variable in the editor, and that's why this isn't playing nice. That is what I was hunting for. Okay, we've we're starting to get this taken care of. Um, Okay, so there's our class. Now here's gonna be the part that's kind of interesting because we know that we have this giant array of Booleans that we need to take care of. So we need one more serialized property up here. And this is going to be the, uh, what I'm gonna call the skill available block. Property dot find property relative when we say find property relative, it's just what is the variable, the stored variable by this name. In this case, it's available skills. Uh, I is less than uh, And now just for each skill in this thing, we're gonna go down the list and just block them all out at once and take care of them in one hopefully massive for loop. So we're gonna get the property height using base.get property height. Oh, that's a float. Okay, that's fine. I can I can deal with floats. Um oh can we? Oh yeah, these are all floats. That's crazy. Okay. kind of waiting for things to break, but it looks like nothing's going to, so let's continue. Um, let's see here, so this is gonna be a little interesting, and actually I do have to take off, so I don't think I'll have time to dive into this right now. We're going to either have to pick this up where I, I left off, to, not tomorrow, not tomorrow. Um, there's no stream tomorrow, no stream Christmas day, unless, uh, I really find myself with a ton of free time, but I think I'm not going to, family being the obligation that it is. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for joining me. I hope you have a happy holidays. I will be back after Christmas. Um, not exactly sure what the timing is going to look like, but that is, uh, if you follow Twitter, I'll, I'll keep you guys in the, the loop. Thank you again for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun. We'll finish this up next time, I think. I say question mark on the end of that because uh, I may just do this offline at some point because I hate futzing with the editor while online on stream. But honestly, we're almost done. So I don't actually feel all that bad for handling it this way. So we'll see how it goes. Thanks again, guys. You've been great. I will see you next time.